Good morning. Good morning. It's great to see you all this morning. Welcome to our service of worship. And if you could kind of move toward the middle and give uh, folks who are arriving a, a place to sit, that would be helpful. It's so good to see you all this morning. On behalf of the whole church, I welcome you, especially if you're guests with us this morning. We are so glad you're here worshiping with us. I just want to ask you very briefly to uh, take the attendance registration folder and fill it out and pass it down. And if you are desiring to join the church this morning by profession of your faith or transfer of your membership, then there is a card for you to fill out. And if you would fill that out, and then this morning, rather than during the last hymn, after the service is over, if you would come down front and meet Dr. Lamar Smith, uh, he will, Lamar, you want to re- wave your hand? Lamar will be down front to, uh, to receive you as a member of the congregation and to welcome you. And it'll be wonderful to, to have you as a member of this community of faith. Also, I want to ask that you take a moment and look at the announcements that are on the right-hand side of your bulletin. It's a tear-off that contains announcements. Please note especially the first three about what's happening today. Read that. And if this would be helpful for you, particularly the service, the, the workshop and the service this afternoon, uh, for those who have lost loved ones, then take note of that. Or if you know of someone who has that need. And also, we need to finish uh, getting the gifts for our kids at T.A. Sims Elementary School. We provide gifts every year for them. They are all on free and reduced lunch, all families that are below the poverty line. And so we want to give them a great uh, Christmas gift. And uh, so please read that information and take note of that. And then on the back side of that, you'll see some announcements in a box down there. And I hope you'll take advantage of those as well. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a lullaby as a soothing refrain, specifically a song to quiet children or lull them to sleep. It's a word that's only about 300 years old, but it's an idea that has surely been around since the first mother shielded her newborn and offered songs of peace as sleep was ushered in. So, this morning, we visit the lullaby, a song from parent to child, a song that might be traditional or might be unique. This morning, we visit the very human Mary singing to her very human baby son.
Here is my servant, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will faithfully bring forth justice. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out from the prison those who sit in darkness. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare.
join me in our opening prayer? May the blessings of the present time, the needs that call for our response this day, and the joy you manifest in this very moment inspire in us profound love this season. Amen. Please be seated.
While we sing Jesus Loves Me for our baptism, I would invite um, all the parents, if you have children sitting with you and you'd like to take them to the children's wing for their programs, this would be the time to do that. So thank you. infant baptism. Beloved of God, baptism is a sign to us of the mercy and the grace of God, indicating that we do not come into this relationship on the basis of anything that we have done or anything that we have accomplished, but simply on the basis of God's gracious invitation of love toward us. This is a sacrament in our church, a means of grace in the United Methodist Church. Infant baptism is an especially appropriate demonstration of this grace as we remember the words of Jesus when he said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such as these belongs the kingdom of God. Can I ask you now as you stand before God at this congregation, can you affirm your faith in Christ? And do you promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races? Yes. And will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Kennedy Sophia, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now if you'll place your hands on her also. Kennedy Sophia, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jackson Charles, I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now if you'll place your hands on him as well. Jackson Charles, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, let's get this other one here. <laughs> here we go. What a great blessing it is to participate in this holy sacrament. And we are church family. And so we welcome these new members of the household of faith, these children, and we pledge along with their parents to nurture them in the Christian faith and to do all that we can to make sure that they grow in the knowledge and love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. And someday they'll stand at this or some other altar and make their own profession of faith in Christ. And all this is God's wondrous gift offered to us without price. And now let us respond together. With God's help, we will so order our lives 
after the example of Christ, that Kennedy Sophia and Jackson Charles, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Be still, you ask us. Be still and know that you are God, that your love is here for us now and in every moment, creating new life in us, nurturing us, sustaining us. O oh God, we worry, we anticipate, and we plan and fret over what might be. Just let us be still. Be still and see the love and light in this present moment. Hear the needs just for this day. And gracious God, we have regrets. We wish we could do some things over and we replay those scenarios knowing that they are a waste of our life, but doing it anyway. And so let us be still. Be still and turn our attention to what is now to the new life you can create, to who and what needs our prayers, needs our time, what we are able to do now, and what we must let go of today. Gracious God, for this day we give you ourselves, and we give you our full attention as your people in service to your kingdom, as we now join together to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.
What street is this, you ask? Do you not know it? You have walked it a thousand times. You have seen what you wished to see. Look about and see what is. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. God, open, open our, our eyes, eyes to see, see. Not, not just, just what, what we want, want to see, but what, what is, is difficult to see. What makes us want to avert our eyes? What calls out to us for compassion? These two children belong to all humanity. This boy is ignorance. This girl is want. Beware them both, but most of all, beware this boy. For ignorance is doom. I tell you, from every seed of evil in this boy, a field of ruin is grown that shall be gathered in and garnered up and sown again in many places in the world. Deny them if you wish, but they are the growth of your indifference. Take away from me the trappings of empty worship, the hollow noise of liturgy and song, your offerings and solemn assemblies. Instead, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Let our worship of you be authentic, God of justice. We confess that our own indifference is fuel for the fires of want and ignorance. As we sing our songs of praise and offer you our gifts, do not allow us to skip over the more earthy ways of worshiping you in acts of compassion and healing. But know this, that no space of regret can make amends for a life's opportunities misused. And what does God require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? You have empowered us with your spirit, loving God. May we not waste the gifts we have been given. Use us in service to your kingdom of justice, compassion, mercy, and love. Amen.
of his servant. Surely from now all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted them up lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Come in, come in, and know me better, man. Scrooge entered timidly. I am the ghost of Christmas present, said the spirit. Look upon me. Scrooge reverently did so. You have never seen the like of me before, exclaimed the spirit. Never. Scrooge made answer to it. Have never walked forth with the younger members of my family, pursued the phantom. I'm afraid I have not. Have you had many brothers, spirit? More than 1,800. A tremendous family to provide for, muttered Scrooge. The ghost of Christmas present rose. Spirit, conduct me where you will. I went forth last night on compulsion, and I learnt a lesson which is working now. Tonight, if you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. If you have aught to teach me, let me profit by it. May those be our words this morning, as we consider what Christmas present has to teach us. You know that during this time of Advent, we are following the story of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Also, of course, we are listening to the words of the prophets, the words of Jesus, the gospel story, and how both of these might speak to us in our lives today. If you have aught to teach me, Let me profit from it. You remember that Ebenezer Scrooge in the story does indeed profit from it. And from the visit from his old business partner, long dead, seven years, the ghost of Marley. And from the ghosts of Christmas past, present, and future. In fact, he profits so much from it, as a matter of fact, that at the beginning of the story... Scrooge is described in this way. Oh, but he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire. Secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. But then... After he receives these visits, after he looks at the past and he really sees the present and he sees what could be in the future, 
He is a changed man. He's transformed. So that at the end of the story, he's described like this. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. Or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. It was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. In the musical version of A Christmas Carol, there is... The word, there, there are the words that we heard read a moment ago when Sid and Linda led us in the responsive reading. Words that Scrooge speaks to the ghost and then the ghost responds. When they're on an f- unfamiliar street, or at least it seems unfamiliar to Scrooge, he inquires about what place this is, what street is this? And the ghost replies, well, you've been here a thousand times. But you saw what you wanted to see. Look about you and see what is. Look about you and see what is. When we come to faith in Christ, we come to be able to see clearly. To see not just what we want to see, but to see what is. When we faithfully follow in the footsteps of Jesus, Jesus takes us to places and shows us things about ourselves, about our world, about our community, about what God is doing in the world so that we see. We actually see clearly. Not just what we want to see, but we see what is. That was certainly the case for Ebenezer Scrooge. He goes with the ghost of Christmas present who takes him to see what Christmas really is. Not what he wants to see, but what really is. And he goes to visit a place he had never been before, clearly, and that is the home of his clerk, Bob Cratchit, and his family. And the ghost takes him to see Welsh coal miners and to see people at sea. And to see people who are living in poverty or living in difficult circumstances, all of whom have received the spirit of Christmas. And all of whom are joyous. And so Scrooge begins to see that money can't buy happiness. That joy is not something that can be measured in a bank book or on a ledger sheet. But what he learns is that joy has its genesis in something else. Now for Scrooge, he has been pursuing, as we heard his fiancée Belle say last week, he has been pursuing a golden idol. But now he sees that even those in poverty can have joy. And they find that joy in connection, in relationship, in generous giving and receiving what others have To give to them. Now, Charles Dickens never, ever romanticizes poverty. In fact, he shows its ugly side in many of his writings and in A Christmas Carol as well. But what he does make clear is that the amount of money in the bank account is not what determines joy or happiness. And we all know that to be true. We've learned that. We know that's a fact. But Ebenezer Scrooge learns it as he sees what is in that Cratchit family and their love for each other and the connection they have with each other. Now, if we were to be taken on a journey by the spirit of Christmas present, that spirit might take us to some places that we haven't been before or places that we have been that we would rather not go Places where people do live in poverty or hunger or in disease. Places where people have not much at all and have no reason by Scrooge's measure to have any measure of happiness. But we would find there in Africa or in Costa Rica places that our mission teams have been. We would find in homes in our own community in places we may not normally 
go, we would find joy. We would find peace and happiness in some of those places because that doesn't depend on wealth. Scrooge learned that from the ghost of Christmas present when he was able really to see, really to see what's going on. He also learned that the measure of